Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna take a look at another user requested application to install on Open Media Vault. Uh, more specifically in Docker though, you don't need Open Media Vault. Uh, this will install just straight into Docker, but uh, if you've been kind of following along with the tutorials I've been doing, uh, it's all kind of tied to Open Media Vault in some way. So uh, in this video, we're gonna take a look at Ubiquity. Uh, Ubiquity is a, a platform that allows you to read your eBooks and comics on your favorite device wherever you go as per their website. Uh, so basically what you can do is set this up as a server. Uh, you're gonna set up some shared folders. You're gonna drop all of your uh, eBooks and that sort of thing into these folders. And then you can access it on your own domain name like books.yourdomain.com if you wanted to do that. Or you could just have it set up locally uh, so that you can just pick up one of your devices, go to your uh, server's address and start reading from there as well. So there's lots of different options here. Uh, I will show how to set this up on traffic, sort of. I'll show you the labels you'll need in order to get this working on traffic. If you wanna follow along based on my last video where I showed how to set up traffic with Cloudflare using SSLs and custom domains. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into this and get started. Okay guys, so here we are on my desktop. Obviously we're on the Ubiquity website um, and it's got some stuff on here you could take a look at if you want to. Uh, it talks about the file size or file types that it uh, supports, EPUB, CBZ, CBR, PDF. I'm sure there are some others, but those are the ones that it handles by default. So uh, there is an option to download this as a, just a desktop application that you can run on Mac, uh, Windows, and Linux. Uh, the problem with those is I think they're not gonna be quite the same to set up full remote access. I haven't dug into that and I could be completely wrong, but uh, the whole point of us doing this is to set it up on a server. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to do that. Uh, in order to do that, what we're gonna do is actually close this window and we're gonna come over here to uh, both Open Media Vault to set up some shares. Uh, we're also going to set up a stack in Portainer. And of course, I've already got all of the code and everything I need uh, in a separate window here that I will go ahead and drop in. And we'll go ahead and take a look at what we're gonna need to get going here. So uh, let, me, let me come over to here and minimize that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and open this, or copy that rather. We're gonna go into stacks. We're gonna create a new stack. And I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that in there. And of course we've got to give it a name, otherwise we can't deploy the stack. So uh, the first five lines, normally it's the first seven, but in this case, the first five lines, we're not gonna change. Uh, below that line six, seven, eight, and nine, uh, those are all labels that you would use if you've got traffic set up and you want to have this set up for uh, remote access. Uh, in this case, I would set it up on books.dbtechdemo.com. Uh, that's the URL that I use in a lot of these tutorials. Um, but basically, uh, these labels are, are more or less what you would need in order to set this up for remote access on your own custom domain using traffic. Now, of course, you would want to change uh, the URL uh, that you would use to access uh, your server. But uh, other than that, you can leave those alone. If you don't have any plans of setting this up on traffic uh, and making this remotely accessible, you can remove those label lines. You don't need those if you're only gonna access this locally. Below that, we've got a container name of Ubiquity, pretty standard stuff. Uh, below that, we've got some environmental variables, uh, PUID, PGID, and time zone or TZ. Uh, all of those you'll want to edit. Uh, the, for the PUID and PGID, I show this in every video. Uh, so if you've seen that, if you've seen that in previous videos, you can skip the next probably 30-ish seconds, or you can hang out and watch me do it again. So in order to get the PUID and PGID, what we'll need to do here is actually open up PuTTY. Uh, that is the SSH program that I like to use anyway. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and log into my server there. Let's go ahead and drag this over. I'm gonna log in as root, oops, like so. And what I'm looking for is the ID, uh, the PUID and PGID of the admin account that I'm using that I'm currently logged in with. Um, and you'll know what, what the name of that, uh, that account is by looking up at the top right-hand corner of your portainer screen. So again, I'm looking for the ID of, in this case, admin. So if I do that, you can see my UID or PUID or user ID is 998 and my GID, PGID or group ID is 100. Uh, so go ahead and uh, get your numbers for what those values are. Uh, we'll go ahead and close that uh, and plug those into there. Uh, below that, the time zone, you'll wanna switch that to your time zone. I'm very, very close to Denver, so that's the one I'm gonna use. Uh, below that, we've got max memory, and that's just saying, uh, how much memory do you wanna give access to this application? Uh, you know, obviously loading big PDFs and things like that uh, make 
take several megabytes of memory in order to work properly. I've got this set at one meg, but you could probably jack this up fairly high without doing any damage uh, and making this perform a little bit better as it stores things in memory that it needs to. Below that, we've got volumes and <clears throat> we're gonna have to go in and create some of these volumes. And I've already created <clears throat> uh, this configuration folder uh, here on Open Media Vault. In fact, if I go over here to shared folders, uh, you can see that I've got this uh, SRB dev disk by label files slash config folder here. Uh, and if you look, that's basically <clears throat> Uh, what this says right here, but I appended it with slash ubiquity. Uh, and that's just so that uh, it will drop uh, ubiquity uh, configuration files and folders in its own separate folder to keep it kind of away from all of the other applications so that it won't have any impact on anything else. If we shut it down or something else happens, uh, it will be in its own little folder, won't have any impact on anything else. Below that, we have three more volumes that we'll want to create most likely anyway, or maybe you're only gonna do books. Uh, in that case, you wouldn't need comics and files. Uh, and then you could just set up a books folder or a comics folder if you were only gonna do comics. Um, so just to kind of show you that real quick, uh, I will set up a books folder here. So what I'll do, uh, books like so, uh, I'll go ahead and put it on that drive. I'll say everybody gets read and write and I'll click save. And then I'll jump over here to SMB CIFS and make sure that this is enabled. If it's not, uh, click that so that it's green and then click save, then jump over to shares. Uh, and then you're gonna click add, click the drop down, uh, go to books, change public to only guests and click save. Uh, once you've got that, you'll have to click apply and give this just a moment to save here. Now, the reason we're doing this, we're setting it up on C SMB CIFS is so that we can actually drag and drop uh, files to that folder so that the application can find our eBooks and things like that. Um, so we'll go ahead and give this just a second to load up um, and then uh, we can deploy the container. I'm only gonna do books this time. I'm not gonna do files, uh, which you can do, as well as comics. I think you get the idea of you'll create those folders, drop the appropriate things into those folders. And uh, then once we deploy the server, the server will have access to those files and folders. So now that we've got that, what we can do is come over to here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove those two lines, as I mentioned. Now below that, we've got ports uh, 2202 and 2203. Uh, we're gonna access, I believe, we're gonna access this on port 2202. Uh, the other one, I, mm, I would actually have to go in and look. This is also available in ARM processors. So um, anything like a Raspberry Pi or similar devices, this should work on just fine. So let's take a look here, uh, 2202. Oh, right, okay, so port 2202 is the library port. Like, that would be where you would just access all of the files and folders and things like that. Uh, if you wanna do administrative work on the application, then you're gonna to go to port 2203. Uh, chances are you don't have anything on those ports already, so you can go ahead and leave those as they are. Uh, so now that we've got all of that, and of course, restart unless stopped, uh, it just says, hey, if it has a hiccup, something goes wrong, just restart the application to keep it running. Uh, so now that we've got all of that, I'm actually gonna remove the labels because I'm not gonna have this available. Um, so this is more or less what yours is gonna look like. This all will be available in the blog post linked in the description down below as well. So uh, be sure to check that out. Uh, so let's scroll down and click on deploy the stack. Of course, this may take a couple of minutes depending on your internet connection and things like that. So we'll let this run and then we'll come back once it has deployed. Okay, so we have deployed the container here. So we'll go ahead and open up Ubiquity and then we'll click on the logs uh, thing here. Um, and it's going through a, an initial setup, uh, making sure that it's got everything that it needs in order to run properly. Uh, and it looks like everything there should be good to go. So what I'll do is I will uh, go here to 2202 and let's see, okay. So let's try 2203. Okay, so, um, because I'm dumb, I forgot that you actually have to uh, kind of trail that URL with a bit more. So uh, it's gonna be your uh, server address, port 2202 slash ubiquity. Um, and then we should be able to do uh, 2203 and then add admin to that, I believe. Hey, look at that. So now we're gonna create a user pass. Well, that is not focused at all, holy cow. Okay, so now we're gonna create a user or a, an admin password. So, uh, We'll just go ahead and type in a password here. And then we'll click Submit. And then we'll type in our password again, now that we have created it. Uh, clicking Enter on the keyboard doesn't seem to work, so you will have to click 
uh, as you go there. But uh, here we are. Um, we've got uh, comics. Of course, we don't have anything set up for comics. Um, uh, we've got basically all of our settings here. So what we want to do is open this up. And we'll type in our address here, like so. And here we've got books. And then what I'm going to do is actually go over to uh, my other server. Okay, so here are some ebooks that I have on my uh, computer here. So we'll go ahead and just drag those over. Um, these are fairly small, so it's only going to be a couple hundred megs for a whole bunch of books here. All right, so once we get our, our books copied over there, uh, we will want to <clears throat> make sure that we've got uh, possibly a periodic scan if you're going to add a lot of books uh, over time or whatever. <clears throat> You may want to add a periodic scan here, maybe once a day, once an hour, <clears throat> excuse me. What I'm gonna say is launch new scan here. And hopefully this will do exactly that. So let's open that in a new, app, new tab there. Let's close that. Books. Hey, there we go. Now we have access <clears throat> to the books that are on our server here. Now, of course, some of these won't work uh, because they may not be the right uh, the right file type or something like that. So, uh, because sometimes when you download an ebook, it'll have multiple versions. Uh, it may have an EPUB or uh, just whatever uh, different variations of file types that might come in. Um, so it may or may not be able to open here. Uh, here we've got High Hunt. Both of these are the same book, Like, but if I open this one, I've got the option to download it. But if I open this one, I can click on Read. <clears throat> And then we can go through and actually read the book. So if you run into a situation where uh, you can only download the book, you can't read it, um, you've got the wrong file type for what's set up here. So anyway, you can see that this is working now. So let's go back. Uh, you know, we can take a look here. Um, looks like this is just uh, kind of a synopsis. Uh, here again, we can click read. Uh, and then we can scroll through. And of course, we can access this on our phone, our tablet, whatever we wanted to do here. Okay, so you may be wondering, why did we set up an admin account? Uh, basically, that is so that we can uh, tell it when to launch, when to scan. Uh, we can set uh, things like, oops, if we go to books, uh, we can set the display thumbnail size. Uh, we can basically configure everything from here. Uh, and of course, uh, security settings, you can add users if you wanted to give different users access to different things. Uh, you could do that as well, so that's very handy. Uh, let's say you wanted to set up a full library, but you only want your kids to have access to kids' books, but you want uh, your teenagers to have access to whatever. Uh, you can set up different user accounts and give them access to different things here. Okay, guys, there you go. There's how to set up Ubiquity on your Docker slash Open Media Vault server. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff, very handy, especially if you've got a large ebook library that you want to have access to and not rely on third party services to manage for you. Uh, now you can set this all up on your server and uh, have a bit more peace of mind that nothing is going anywhere unless you tell it to. Overall, it's pretty easy to set up. Uh, basically, pretty straightforward, uh, just generally speaking. Um, and I think that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to cover here. Of course, if you've got questions, definitely leave those in the, the comment section down below. Again, all of this will be accessible on the blog post linked in the description. Also, while you're in the description, there will be a couple of links uh, where you can support the channel uh, directly or indirectly. Uh, you can support directly by going to uh, Coffee. Uh, Coffee is like a uh, tip jar for like one-time contributions. There's also a uh, Patreon if you wanted to uh, become a patron, that would be amazing. There are a few different levels uh, at which you can subscribe. Uh, there are there's like the $5 and above level. Uh, we'll give you access to a members only Discord server uh, where we can just kind of hang out and chat whenever you'd like to do that. And, oh, there's merch. Uh, there is merch, but with everything going on, it's kind of shipping slowly. Um, I actually, uh, I, I got my own stickers uh, here a while back uh, so I can put it on my car and wherever. So uh, there is merch. It just, it took a couple of weeks to get to me. Uh, so just know that it, with everything going on uh, right now, things may be uh, shipping slowly. So just keep that in mind. Uh, with all that being said, though, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support, and I'll talk to you in the next video.